वेलकम टू आइडियो बुक गैलरी आइडियो बुक गैलरी प्रेजेंट इंडियन पॉलिटी बुक राइटर एम लक्ष्मी का आंसर सो लेट स्टार्ट चैप्टर थ्री सेलियंट फीचर्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन The Indian Constitution is unique in its contents and spirit. Though borrowed from almost every constitution of the world, the Constitution of India has several salient features that distinguish it from the constitutions of the other countries. It should be noted at the outset that a number of original features of the constitution, as adopted in 1949, have undergone a substantial change on account of several amendments, particularly 7th 42nd, 44th, 73rd, 74th, 97th and 101st amendments. In fact, the 42nd Amendment Act 1976 is known as mini constitution due to the important and large number of changes made by it in various parts of the constitution. However, in the Keswananda Bharati case 1, 1973 The Supreme Court ruled that the constituent power of parliament under article 368 does not enable it to alter the basic structure of the constitution. Salient features of the constitution. The salient features of the constitution as it stands today are as follows. 1 lengthiest written constitution. Constitutions are classified into written like the american constitution or unwritten like the british constitution the constitution of india is the lengthiest of all the written constitutions of the world it is a very comprehensive elaborate and detailed document originally 1949 the constitution contained a preamble 395 articles divided into 22 parts and 8 schedules Presently 2019 it consists of a preamble about 470 articles divided into 25 parts and 12 schedules too The various amendments carried out since 1951 have deleted about 20 articles and one part 7 and added about 95 articles four parts IVA IXA IXP and XIVA and four schedules 9 10 11 and 12 No other constitution in the world has so many articles and schedules 3 Four factors have contributed to the elephantine size of our constitution They are a geographical factors that is the vastness of the country and its diversity b historical factors example the influence of the government of India Act of 1935 which was bulky C single constitution for both the center and the states for D dominance of legal luminaries in the constituent assembly The constitution contains not only the fundamental principles of governance but also detailed administrative provisions Further those matters which in other modern democratic countries have been left to the ordinary legislation or established political conventions have also been included in the constitutional document itself in India two drawing from various sources the constitution of india has borrowed most of its provisions from the constitutions of various other countries as well as from the government of india act 5 of 1935 Dr B R Ambedkar proudly acclaimed that the constitution of India has been framed after ransacking all the known constitutions of the world six The structural part of the constitution is to a large extent derived from the government of India act of 1935 The philosophical part of the constitution the fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy derive their inspiration from the american and irish constitutions respectively the political part of the constitution the principle of cabinet government and the relations between the executive and the legislature have been largely drawn from the british constitution 7 the other provisions of the constitution have been drawn from the constitutions of canada australia germany ussr now russia france south africa japan and so on eight 
The most profound influence and material source of the constitution is the Government of India Act 1935. The federal scheme, judiciary, governors, emergency powers, the public service commissions and most of the administrative details are drawn from this act. More than half of the provisions of constitution are identical to or bear a close resemblance to the act of 19359. 3 blend of rigidity and flexibility. Constitutions are also classified into rigid and flexible. A rigid constitution is one that requires a special procedure for its amendment, as for example, the American Constitution. A flexible constitution on the other hand is one that can be amended in the same manner as the ordinary laws are made as for example the british constitution the constitution of india is neither rigid nor flexible but a synthesis of both article 368 provides for two types of amendments a some provisions can be amended by a special majority of the parliament i a two third majority of the members of each house present and voting and a majority of the total membership of each house b some other provisions can be amended by a special majority of the parliament and with the ratification by half of the total states at the same time some provisions of the constitution can be amended by a simple majority of the parliament in the manner of ordinary legislative process Notably these amendments do not come under article 368 4 federal system with unitary bias the constitution of india establishes a federal system of government it contains all the usual features of a federation with to government division of powers written constitution supremacy of constitution rigidity of constitution independent judiciary and bicameralism However, the Indian Constitution also contains a large number of unitary or non-federal features, with a strong center, single constitution, single citizenship, flexibility of constitution, integrated judiciary, appointment of state governor by the center, all India services, emergency provisions, and so on. Moreover, the term federation has nowhere been used in the Constitution. Article one. On the other hand, describes India as a union of states, which implies two things: one, Indian Federation is not the result of an agreement by the states, and two, no state has the right to secede from the federation. Hence, the Indian Constitution has been variously described as federal in form but unitary in spirit, quasi-federal by case. Where? Bargaining federalism by Morris Jones, cooperative federalism by Granville Austin, federation with a centralizing tendency by Ivor Jennings, and so on. Five parliamentary form of government. The Constitution of India has opted for the British parliamentary system of government rather than American presidential system of government. The parliamentary system is based on the principle of cooperation and coordination between the legislative and executive organs while the presidential system is based on the doctrine of separation of powers between the two organs. The parliamentary system is also known as the Westminster 10 model of government, responsible government and cabinet government. The constitution establishes the parliamentary system not only at the center but also in the states. The features of parliamentary government in India are a presence of nominal and real executives b majority party rule c collective responsibility of the executive to the legislature d membership of the ministers in the legislature e leadership of the prime minister or the chief minister f dissolution of the lower house lok sabha or assembly Even though the Indian parliamentary system is largely based on the British pattern there are some fundamental differences between the two For example the Indian parliament is not a sovereign body like the British parliament Further the Indian state has an elected head republic while the British state has hereditary head monarchy In a parliamentary system whether in India or Britain 
the role of the prime minister has become so significant and crucial that the political scientists like to call it a prime ministerial government. 6. Synthesis of Parliamentary Sovereignty and Judicial Supremacy The doctrine of sovereignty of parliament is associated with the British Parliament, while the principle of judicial supremacy with that of the American Supreme Court. Just as the Indian parliamentary system differs from the British system, the scope of judicial review power of the Supreme Court in India is narrower than that of what exists in US. This is because the American Constitution provides for due process of law against that of procedure established by law contained in the Indian Constitution, Article 21. Therefore, the framers of the Indian Constitution have preferred a proper synthesis between the British principle of parliamentary sovereignty and the American principle of judicial supremacy. The Supreme Court, on the one hand, can declare the parliamentary laws as unconstitutional through its power of judicial review. The parliament, on the other hand, can amend the major portion of the constitution through its constituent power. 7. Integrated and Independent Judiciary The Indian constitution establishes a judicial system that is integrated as well as independent. The Supreme Court stands at the top of the integrated judicial system in the country. Below it, there are high courts at the state level. Under a high court, there is a hierarchy of subordinate courts, that is, district courts and other lower courts. This single system of courts enforces both the central laws as well as the state laws, unlike in USA where the federal laws are enforced by the federal judiciary and the state laws are enforced by the state judiciary. The Supreme Court is a federal court, the highest court of appeal, the guarantor of the fundamental rights of the citizens and the guardian of the constitution. Hence, the constitution has made various provisions to ensure its independence, security of tenure of the judges, fixed service conditions for the judges, all the expenses of the Supreme Court charged on the Consolidated. Fund of India – Prohibition on Discussion on the Conduct of Judges In the legislature's ban on practice after retirement, power to punish for its contempt vested in the Supreme Court, separation of the judiciary from the executive, and so on. 8. Fundamental Rights Part 3 of the Indian Constitution guarantees 611 fundamental rights to all the citizens a. Right to equality, Articles 14 to 18, b. Right to freedom, Articles 19 to 22, c. Right against exploitation, Articles 23 to 24, d. Right to freedom of religion, Articles 25 to 28, e. Cultural and educational rights, Articles 29 to 30, and f. Right to Constitutional Remedies, Article 32 The fundamental rights are meant for promoting the idea of political democracy. They operate as limitations on the tyranny of the executive and arbitrary laws of the legislature. They are justiciable in nature, that is, they are enforceable by the courts for their violation. The aggrieved person can directly go to the Supreme Court which can issue the writs of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari and quo warranto for the restoration of his rights. However, the fundamental rights are not absolute and subject to reasonable restrictions. Further, they are not sacrosanct and can be curtailed or repealed by the parliament through a constitutional amendment act. They can also be suspended during the operation of a national emergency except the rights guaranteed by Articles 20 and 21. 9. Directive Principles of State Policy According to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the directive principles of state policy is a novel feature of the Indian Constitution. They are enumerated in Part 4 of the Constitution. They can be classified into three broad categories, socialistic, Gandhian and liberal intellectual. The directive principles are meant for promoting the ideal of social and economic democracy. They seek to establish a welfare state in India. However, unlike the fundamental rights, 
The directives are non-justiciable in nature, that is, they are not enforceable by the courts for their violation. Yet, the constitution itself declares that these principles are fundamental in the governance of the country and it shall be the duty of the state to apply these principles in making laws. Hence, they impose a moral obligation on the state authorities for their application. But, the real force, sanction, behind them is political, that is, public opinion. In the Minerva Mills case 12, 1980, the Supreme Court held that the Indian constitution is founded on the bedrock of the balance between the fundamental rights and the directive principles. 10. Fundamental Duties The original constitution did not provide for the fundamental duties of the citizens. These were added during the operation of internal emergency, 1975-77, by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1976 on the recommendation of the Swarn Singh Committee. The 86th Constitutional Amendment Act of 2002 added one more fundamental duty. The Part 4 of the Constitution, which consists of only one Article 51-A, specifies the 11 fundamental duties with to respect the Constitution, national flag and national anthem, to protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity of the country, to promote the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people, to preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture and so on. The fundamental duties serve as a reminder to citizens that while enjoying their rights, they have also to be quite conscious of duties they owe to their country, their society, and to their fellow citizens. However, like the directive principles, the duties are also non-justiciable in nature. 11. A Secular State The Constitution of India stands for a secular state. Hence, it does not uphold any particular religion as the official religion of the Indian state. The following provisions of the constitution reveal the secular character of the Indian state. A. The term secular was added to the preamble of the Indian constitution by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1976. B. The preamble secures to all citizens of India liberty of belief, faith and worship. C. The state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or equal protection of the laws. Article 14. D. The state shall not discriminate against any citizen on the ground of religion. Article 15. E. Equality of opportunity for all citizens in matters of public employment. Article 16. F. All persons are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess, practice and propagate any religion. Article 25. G. Every religious denomination or any of its section shall have the right to manage its religious affairs. Article 26. H. No person shall be compelled to pay any taxes for the promotion of a particular religion. Article 27. I. No religious instruction shall be provided in any educational institution maintained by the state. Article 28. J. Any section of the citizens shall have the right to conserve its distinct language, script or culture. Article 29. K. All minorities shall have the right to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice. Article 30. L. The state shall endeavor to secure for all the citizens a uniform civil code. Article 44. The Western concept of secularism connotes a complete separation between the religion, the church, and the state, the politics. This negative concept of secularism is inapplicable in the Indian situation where the society is multireligious. Hence, the Indian constitution embodies the positive concept of secularism, i.e., giving equal respect to all religions or protecting all religions equally. Moreover, the constitution has also abolished the old system of communal representation 13, that is, reservation of seats in the legislatures on the basis of religion. However, it provides for the temporary reservation of seats for the scheduled castes 
and scheduled tribes to ensure adequate representation to them. 12th Universal Adult Franchise The Indian Constitution adopts Universal Adult Franchise as a basis of elections to the Lok Sabha and the State Legislative Assemblies. Every citizen who is not less than 18 years of age has a right to vote without any discrimination of caste, race, religion, sex, literacy, wealth and so on. The voting age was reduced to 18 years from 21 years in 1989 by the 61st Constitutional Amendment Act of 1988. The introduction of universal adult franchise by the constitution makers was a bold experiment and highly remarkable in view of the vast size of the country, its huge population, high poverty, social inequality and overwhelming illiteracy. Universal adult franchise makes democracy broad-based, enhances the self-respect and prestige of the common people, upholds the principle of equality, enables minorities to protect their interests and opens up new hopes and vistas for weaker sections. 13. Single Citizenship Though the Indian constitution is federal and envisages a dual polity, center and states, it provides for only a single citizenship, that is, the Indian citizenship. In countries like USA, on the other hand, each person is not only a citizen of USA, but also a citizen of the particular state to which he belongs. Thus, he owes allegiance to both and enjoys dual sets of rights, one conferred by the national government and another by the state government. In India, all citizens irrespective of the state in which they are born or reside enjoy the same political and civil rights of citizenship all over the country and no discrimination is made between them. Despite the constitutional provision for a single citizenship and uniform rights for all the people, India has been witnessing the communal riots, class conflicts, caste wars, linguistic clashes and ethnic disputes. This means that the cherished goal of the Constitution makers to build a united and integrated Indian nation has not been fully realized. 14 Independent Bodies The Indian Constitution not only provides for the legislative, executive and judicial organs of the government, central and state, but also establishes certain independent bodies. They are envisaged by the constitution as the bulk works of the democratic system of government in India. These are a election commission to ensure free and fair elections to the parliament, the state legislatures, the office of president of India and the office of vice president of India. B controller and auditor general of India to audit the accounts of the central and state governments. He acts as the guardian of public purse and comments on the legality and propriety of government expenditure. C. Union Public Service Commission to conduct examinations for recruitment to All India Services 15 and higher central services and to advise the President on disciplinary matters. D. State Public Service Commission in every state to conduct examinations for recruitment to state services and to advise the governor on disciplinary matters. The constitution ensures the independence of these bodies through various provisions like security of tenure, fixed service conditions, expenses being charged on the Consolidated Fund of India, and so on. 15. Emergency Provisions the Indian constitution contains elaborate emergency provisions to enable the president to meet any extraordinary situation effectively. The rationality behind the incorporation of these provisions is to safeguard the sovereignty, unity, integrity and security of the country, the democratic political system and the constitution. The constitution envisages three types of emergencies, namely, a. National emergency on the ground of war or external aggression or armed rebellion 16, Article 352. b. State emergency, President's rule, on the ground of failure of constitutional machinery in the states, Article 356, or failure to comply with the directions of the center, Article 365, 
and c financial emergency on the ground of threat to the financial stability or credit of india article 360 during an emergency the central government becomes all powerful and the states go into the total control of the center it converts the federal structure into a unitary one without a formal amendment of the constitution this kind of transformation of the political system from federal during normal times to unitary during emergency is a unique feature of the indian constitution 16 three tier government originally the indian constitution like any other federal constitution provided for a dual polity and contained provisions with regard to the organization and powers of the center and the states later the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment acts 1992 have added a third tier of government i local which is not found in any other constitution of the world the 73rd amendment act of 1992 gave constitutional recognition to the panchayats rural local governments by adding a new part 917 and a new schedule 11 to the constitution similarly the 74th amendment act of 1992 gave constitutional recognition to the municipalities urban local governments by adding a new part 9a18 and a new schedule 12 to the constitution 17 cooperative societies The 97th Constitutional Amendment Act of 2011 gave a constitutional status and protection to cooperative societies. In this context, it made the following three changes in the constitution. One, it made the right to form cooperative societies a fundamental right, Article 19. Two, it included a new directive principle of state policy on promotion of cooperative societies, Article 43-B. 3 it added a new part 9b in the constitution which is entitled as the cooperative societies articles to 43 zh to 43 zt the new part 9b contains various provisions to ensure that the cooperative societies in the country function in a democratic professional autonomous and economically sound manner it empowers the parliament in respect of multi state cooperative societies and the state legislatures in respect of other cooperative societies to make the appropriate law criticism of the constitution the constitution of india as framed and adopted by the constituent assembly of india has been criticized on the following grounds One a borrowed constitution the critics opined that the Indian constitution contains nothing new and original they described it as a borrowed constitution or a bag of borrowings or a hodgepodge constitution or a patchwork of several documents of the world constitutions however this criticism is unfair and illogical this is because the framers of the constitution made necessary modifications in the features borrowed from other constitutions for their suitability to the indian conditions at the same time avoiding their faults while answering the above criticism in the constituent assembly dr b r ambedkar the chairman of the drafting committee said one likes to ask whether there can be anything new in a constitution framed at this hour in the history of the world More than 100 years have rolled over when the first written constitution was drafted. It has been followed by many countries reducing their constitutions to writing. What the scope of a constitution should be has long been settled. Similarly, what are the fundamentals of a constitution are recognized all over the world. Given these facts, all constitutions in their main provisions must look similar. The only new things, if there can be any, in a constitution framed so late in the day are the variations made to remove the faults and to accommodate it to the needs of the country. The charge of producing a blind copy of the constitutions of other countries is based, I am sure, on an inadequate study of the constitution.19. 
a carbon copy of the 1935 act the critics said that the framers of the constitution have included a large number of the provisions of the government of india act of 1935 into the constitution of india hence they called the constitution as a carbon copy of the 1935 act or an amended version of the 1935 act for example n shrinivasan observed that the indian constitution is both in language and substance a close copy of the act of 1935 similarly sir ivor jennings a british constitutionalist said that the constitution derives directly from the government of india act of 1935 from which in fact many of its provisions are copied almost textually further p r deshmukh a member of the constituent assembly commented that the constitution is essentially the government of india act of 1935 with only adult franchise added the same dr b r ambedkar answered the above criticism in the constituent assembly in the following way as to the accusation that the draft constitution has reproduced a good part of the provisions of the government of india act 1935 i make no apologies there is nothing to be ashamed of in borrowing It involves no plagiarism. Nobody holds any patent rights in the fundamental ideas of a constitution. What I am sorry about is that the provisions taken from the Government of India Act 1935 relate mostly to the details of administration.20. 3 un-Indian or anti-Indian according to the critics. The Indian constitution is an Indian or anti-Indian because it does not reflect the political traditions and the spirit of India. They said that the foreign nature of the constitution makes it unsuitable to the Indian situation or unworkable in India. In this context, K Hanumanthiya, a member of the constituent assembly, commented, "We wanted the music of Veena or Siddharth, but here we have the music of an English band." That was because our constitution makers were educated that way. Dot twenty one. Similarly, Loknath Misra, another member of the Constituent Assembly, criticized the constitution as a slavish imitation of the West, much more a slavish surrender to the West. Dot twenty two. Further, Lakshmi Narayan Sahu, also a member of the Constituent Assembly, observed. The ideas on which this draft constitution is framed have no manifest relation to the fundamental spirit of India. This constitution would not prove suitable and would break down soon after being brought into operation. Dot twenty three. Four Pan Andandian constitution. According to the critics, the Indian constitution is Andandian because it does not contain the philosophy and ideals of Mahatma Gandhi. the father of the indian nation they opine that the constitution should have been raised and built upon village panchayats and district panchayats in this context the same member of the constituent assembly k hanumanthiya said that is exactly the kind of constitution mahatma gandhi did not want and did not envisage to 2040 rakasam another member of the constituent assembly attributed this lapse to ambedkar's non-participation in the gandhian movement and the antagonism towards the gandhian ideas.25 five elephantine size the critics stated that the indian constitution is too bulky and too detailed and contains some unnecessary elements sir ivor jennings a british constitutionalist observed that the provisions borrowed were not always well selected and that the constitution generally speaking was too long and complicated dot 26 in this context h v kamath a member of the constituent assembly commented the emblem and the crest that we have selected for our assembly is an elephant it is perhaps in consonance with that our constitution too is the bulkiest that the world has produced dot 27 he also said i am sure The house does not agree that we should make the constitution an elephantine 1.28. Six paradise of the law is according to the critics. The Indian constitution is too legalistic and very complicated. They opine that the legal language and phraseology adopted in the constitution makes it a complex document. 
The same Sir Ivor Jennings called it a lawyer's paradise. In this context, H. K. Maheshwaram, a member of the Constituent Assembly, observed the draft tends to make people more litigious, more inclined to go to law courts, less truthful, and less likely to follow the methods of truth and non-violence. If I may say so, the draft is really a lawyer's paradise. It opens up vast avenues of litigation and will give our able and ingenious lawyers plenty of work to do. Twenty nine. Similarly, P. R. Deshmukh, another member of the Constituent Assembly, said, "I should, however, like to say that the draft of the articles that have been brought before the House by D. R. Ambedkar seems to my mind to be far too ponderous, like the ponderous tomes of a law manual." A document dealing with the constitution hardly uses so much of padding and so much of verbiage. Perhaps it is difficult for them to compose a document which should be, to my mind, not a law manual but a socio-political document, a vibrating, pulsating and life-giving document. But to our misfortune, that was not to be, and we have been burdened with so much of words, words and words which could have been very easily eliminated. Table 3.1 The Constitution of India at a glance. I the union and its territory 1 to 4 to citizenship 5 to 11 3 fundamental rights 12 to 35 4 directive principles of state policy 36 to 51 4 a fundamental duties 51-a be the union government 52 to 151 chapter 1 the executive 52 to 78 Chapter to Parliament 79 to 120 to Chapter 3 Legislative Powers of President 123 Chapter 4 The Union Judiciary 124 to 147 Chapter 5 Controller and Auditor General of India 148 to 151 Six The State Governments 150 to 237 Chapter 1 General 150 to Chapter to the Executive 153 to 167 Chapter 3 The State Legislature 168 to 212 Chapter 4 Legislative Powers of Governor 213 Chapter 5 The High Courts to 14 to 230 to Chapter 6 Subordinate Courts to 33 to 237 The States in Part B of the First Schedule deleted 238 deleted Eight, the union territories to 39 to 240 to 9 the panchayats to 43 to 243 Zero nine a the municipalities to forty three p to to forty three z g nine b the cooperative societies to forty three z h to to forty three z t x the scheduled and tribal areas to forty four to to forty four a eleven relations between the union and the states to forty five to two hundred and sixty three chapter one legislative relations to forty five to two hundred and fifty five. Chapter to administrative relations to fifty six to two hundred and sixty three twelve finance property contracts and suits to sixty four to three hundred chapter one finance to sixty four to two hundred and ninety one chapter to borrowing to ninety two to two hundred and ninety three chapter three property contracts rights liabilities obligations and suits to ninety four to three hundred chapter four right to property three hundred dash a thirteen trade. Commerce and intercourse within the territory of India 301 to 307. 14 services under the Union and the States 308 to 323. Chapter 1 services 308 to 314. Chapter 2 public service commissions 315 to 323. 14 a tribunals 323 a to 323. B15 elections 324 to 329 A16 special provisions relating to certain classes 330 to 340 to A17 official language 343 to 351 chapter 1 language of the union 343 to 344 chapter 2 regional languages 345 to 347 chapter 3 language of the supreme court high courts and so on 348 to 349 chapter 4 special directives 350 to 351 18 emergency provisions 350 to 
15 miscellaneous 361 to 367 XX amendment of the constitution 368 21 temporary transitional and special provisions 369 to 392 22 short title commencement authoritative text in hindi and repeals 393 to 395 note part 7 dealing with part b states was deleted by the 7th amendment act 1956 on the other hand both part 4a and part 14a were added by the 42nd amendment act 1976 while part 9a was added by the 74th amendment act 1992 and part 9b was added by the 97th amendment act 2011 table 3.2 important articles of the constitution at a glance articles 1 name and territory of the union articles 3 formation of new states and alteration of areas boundaries or names of existing states articles 13 laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental right articles 14 equality before law articles 16 equality of opportunity in matters of public employment articles 17 abolition of untouchability 19 protection of certain rights regarding freedom of speech etc articles 21 protection of life and personal liberty articles 21 am right to elementary education articles 25 freedom of conscience and free profession practice and propagation of religion Articles 30 Right of Minorities to Establish and Administer Educational Institutions Articles 31 C Saving of Laws Giving Effect to Certain Directive Principles Articles 30 to Remedies for Enforcement of Fundamental Rights Including Writs Articles 38 State to Secure a Social Order for the Promotion of Welfare of the People Articles 40 Organization of Village Panchayat Articles 44 Uniform Civil Code for the Citizens Articles 45 Provision for Early Childhood Care and Education to Children Below the Age of 6 Years Articles 46 Promotion of Educational and Economic Interests of Scheduled Castes, Scheduled Tribes and Other Weaker Sections Articles 50 Separation of Judiciary from Executive 5th Articles 51 Promotion of International Peace and Security 5th Articles 51 of Fundamental Duties Articles 72 Power of President to Grant Pardons etc. and to suspend, remit or commute sentences in certain. Articles Cases 74 Council of Ministers to aid and advise the President Articles 78 Duties of Prime Minister as respects the furnishing of information to the President, etc. Articles 110 Definition of Money Bills 1 Articles 12 Annual Financial Statement Budget Articles 123 Power of President to promulgate ordinances during recess of Parliament Articles 143 Power of President to consult Supreme Court Articles 155 Appointment of Governor Articles 161 Power of Governor to grant pardons, etc. and to suspend, remit or commute sentences in certain cases Articles 163 Council of Ministers to aid and advise the Governor Articles 167 Duties of Chief Minister with regard to the furnishing of information to Governor, etc. Articles 169 Abolition or creation of legislative councils in states to 100 assent to bills by Governor, including reservation for President, Articles 213 Power of Governor to promulgate ordinances during recess of the state legislature. Articles 226 Power of High Courts to issue certain writ. Articles 239 are special provisions with respect to Delhi. Articles 249 Power of Parliament to legislate with respect to A. Matter in the state list in the national interest 260 to adjudication of disputes relating to waters of interstate rivers or river valleys. Articles 263 Provisions with respect to an interstate council. Articles 265 Taxes not to be imposed save by authority of law. Articles 275 Grants from the Union to certain states. Articles 280 Finance Commission, Articles 300 Suits and Proceedings, Articles 300 A Persons Not to be Deprived of Property Save by Authority of Law, Right to Property, Articles 311 Dismissal, 
removal or reduction in rank of persons employed in civil capacities under the union or a state. Articles 312 All India Services Articles 315 Public Service Commissions for the Union and for the States Articles 320 Functions of Public Service Commissions Articles 323 Administrative Tribunals Articles 324 Superintendents Direction and control of elections to be vested in an election commission. Articles 330 Reservation of seats for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in the House of the People. Articles 335 Claims of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes to services and posts. Articles 350 to Proclamation of Emergency, National Emergency. Articles 356 Provisions in case of failure of constitutional machinery in states. President's Rule, Articles 360 Provisions as to Financial Emergency, Articles 365 Effect of Failure to Comply with or to Give Effect to, Directions given by the Union, President's Rule, Articles 368 Power of Parliament to Amend the Constitution and Procedure Therefore, Articles 370 Temporary Provisions with Respect to the State of Jammu and Kashmir 31. Table 3.3 Schedules of the Constitution First Schedule 1 Names of the States and their Territorial Jurisdiction Articles 1 and 4 2. Names of the Union Territories and their Extent Second Schedule Provisions Relating to the Emoluments, Allowances, Privileges and so on of Articles 59, 65, 75, 97 125, 148, 158, 164, 186, and 221. 1. The President of India. 2. The Governors of States. 3. The Speaker and the Deputy Speaker of the Lok Sabha. 4. The Chairman and the Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha. 5. The Speaker and the Deputy Speaker of the Legislative Assembly in the States. 6. The Chairman and the Deputy Chairman of the Legislative Council in the States. 7. The Judges of the Supreme Court. 8. The Judges of the High Courts. 9. The Controller and Auditor General of India. 3rd Schedule Forms of Oaths or Affirmations for Articles 75, 84, 99, 124, 146, 173, 188 and 219. 1. The Union Ministers. 2. The Candidates for Election to the Parliament. 3. The Members of Parliament. 4. The Judges of the Supreme Court. 5. The Controller and Auditor General of India. 6. The State Ministers. 7. The Candidates for Election to the State Legislature. 8. The Members of the State Legislature 9. The Judges of the High Courts 4. Schedule Allocation of Seats in the Rajya Sabha to the States and the Union Territories Articles 4 and 80 5. Schedule Provisions Relating to the Administration and Control of Scheduled Areas and Scheduled Tribes Articles 244 6. Scheduled Provisions Relating to the Administration of Tribal Areas in the States of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Articles 244 and 275. 7. Scheduled Division of Powers Between the Union and the States in Terms of List I, Union List, List II, State List, and List III, Concurrent List. Presently, the Union List contains 98 subjects. Originally 97, the state list contains 59 subjects, originally 66, and the concurrent list contains 52 subjects, originally 47. Articles 246 8th Schedule Languages Recognized by the Constitution Originally, it had 14 languages, but presently there are 22 languages. They are Articles 344 and 351 Assamese, Bengali, Bodo, Dongri, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, Mathili, Mathili, Malayalam, 
मणिपुरी मराठी नेपाली और या पंजाबी संस्कृत संथाली सिंधी तमिल तेलुगु एंड उर्दू सिंधी वॉज एडेड बाई द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन सिक्सटी सेवन कोकणी मणिपुरी एंड नेपाली वर एडेड बाय द सेवेंटी फर्स्ट अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू एंड बोडो डोंगरी मैथिली एंड संथाली वर एडेड बाय द नाइनटी सेकेंड अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड थ्री ओडिया वॉज रीनेम्ड एज ओडियर बाय द नाइनटी सिक्स अमेंडमेंट एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड इलेवन नाइन्थ शेड्यूल एक्ट एंड रेगुलेशन ओरिजिनली थर्टीन बट प्रेजेंटली टू हंड्रेड एंड एटी टू थर्टी टू ऑफ द स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर्स डीलिंग विद लैंड रिफॉर्म्स एंड अबोलिशन ऑफ द जमिंदरी सिस्टम एंड ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट डीलिंग विद अदर मैटर्स दिस शेड्यूल वॉज एडेड बाय द फर्स्ट अमेंडमेंट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वन to protect the laws included in it from judicial scrutiny on the ground of violation of fundamental rights however in 2007 the supreme court ruled that the laws included in this schedule after 24th april 1973 are now open to judicial review articles 31-b 10th schedule provisions relating to disqualification of the members of parliament and state legislatures on the ground of defection This schedule was added by the 52nd Articles 102 and 191 Amendment Act of 1985 also known as Anti-Defection Law 11th schedule specifies the powers authority and responsibilities of panchayats It has 29 matters This schedule was added by the 73rd Amendment Act of 1992 Articles 243-G 12th schedule specifies the powers authority and responsibilities of municipalities It has 18 matters This schedule was added by the 74th amendment act of 1992 Articles 243-W Table 3.4 sources of the constitution at a glance 1 Government of India Act of 1935 Federal Scheme Office of Governor Judiciary Public Service Commissions Emergency Provisions and Administrative Details 2 British Constitution Parliamentary Government Rule of Law Legislative Procedure Single Citizenship Cabinet System Prerogative Writs Parliamentary Privileges and Bicameralism 3 US Constitution Fundamental Rights Independence of Judiciary Judicial Review Impeachment of the President Removal of Supreme Court and High Court Judges and Post of Vice President 4 Irish Constitution Directive Principles of State Policy Nomination of Members to Rajya Sabha and Method of Election of President 5 Canadian Constitution Federation with a Strong Centre Vesting of residuary powers in the center, appointment of state governors by the center, and advisory jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Six Australian Constitution concurrent list, freedom of trade, commerce and intercourse, and joint sitting of the two houses of parliament. Seven Weimar Constitution of Germany suspension of fundamental rights during emergency. Eight Soviet Constitution, USSR, now Russia. fundamental duties and the ideal of justice social economic and political in the preamble nine french constitution republic and the ideals of liberty equality and fraternity in the preamble ten south african constitution procedure for amendment of the constitution and election of members of rajya sabha 11 japanese constitution procedure established by law if you like this episode please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel sukriya so,